Can this intersection ever be fixed? I don't think so, Tim. <laughs> and technically, it's more than one intersection. It's two intersections in one. You could even argue it's three intersections in one. This is the single deadliest set of roadway and intersection in the entirety of the state of Oregon. And not remotely unsurprising, and it has been longer than I've been alive. This is Beaverton Hillsdale Highway, also known, of course, as Farmington Road. This is Shoals Ferry. And this is Olson. Yes, including this stupid little slip lane type of thing going on here. This is technically a fourth intersection, if you think about it. And you have this side residential street, which, by the way, it seems like it just continues, as you can see, disconnected, but it's technically the same road, over here through this parking lot. And it's just a service road, but as you can see, it isn't, and it connects back to Shoals Ferry again. This is a massive problem. What in the hell is this horror show? It just makes zero sense. And of course, the question has now been brought up again, and the problems with it has been brought up again by area residents because of the Alpenrose Dairy property. This whole property is the Alpenrose property. It is supposed to be redeveloped now. And in fact, apparently, according to the articles they've looked at, the state of Oregon is now requiring by law them to officially, by next year, have a plan approved to completely redevelop this into residential units. But of course, here's one of the major issues and problems, is the demand it's going to put on this mess of an intersection. It's right here. You have this road here. You have these roads that are going to lead you back to here as well. And you're going to have people going down through here to access here. In what universe does it make sense to add much higher density, in this case, three-story units probably, in this whole property, knowing it's just going to increase the problems here? Furthermore, on those laws, apparently, it's also required by state law and the state of Oregon that the city of Beaverton, when they annex this, and even before they do, Washington County, therefore, as well, uh, they have to officially designate the town center, quote unquote, borders, which I guess there's some weird specific agreement and thing in the state and federal level when it comes down to town centers and what they officially apply as. And that means that within it, that law says that once they officially designate it, they have to, as quickly as possible, go to redevelop every bit of land around it into much higher density mixed use development, which, to be fair, is desperately needed. It makes sense, especially not just this close to downtown Beaverton and also this close to downtown Portland, believe it or not, and other poor areas of Portland. As you can see, this is the South Waterfront. It's incredibly close to both, and considering it's on multiple major thoroughfares that are actually state highways, and then another major thoroughfare being here in Olson, which isn't, of course, a state highway, but it is very much a thing, and it connects to Hall Boulevard and many other things, which then interacts with 217 all over again, as you can see here, where all these directly connect to each other. So you have Multnomah Boulevard, you have Garden Home Road, you have... 99, you have Capitol Highway, you have Taylor's Ferry, you have Barber Boulevard, you have I-5, you have Olson, Shills Ferry, Beaverton Hillsdale, 217, Hall Boulevard, Greenberg, because this of course is still Shills Ferry. This is Hall Boulevard, this is Olson, this is Garden Home Road, and this of course is Multnomah Boulevard. All of these roads, and everybody who uses them, are so cro crushed together, so close together, and they have so much incredible traffic demand on it that it doesn't make any sense to redevelop any of this to higher density until this, at least this, is fixed. This is such a problem that they've just refused to deal with, knowing that it's going to force mass displacement and unhousing of so many people in the vicinity, along with businesses as well. Everything, it's not just the roads that you have to tear up for a good distance outside of even the intersection itself. It's not just the intersections you have to tear out. You also have to tear out everything surrounding it in a very large radius 
in order to properly redo and reconfigure the entirety of not just the intersection, but therefore the road networks and their approaches to any kind of an intersection. You have to completely tear apart everything. Now, another thing you have to consider about, again, why this forces you to have to ask the question, is it even remotely possible to reconfigure this intersection and fix it at any point now, or has it been way too long, is because of what I just noted, meaning that you also have to consider where do you put the new intersections? Because obviously what you're doing is you're severing them as they stand right now in this horror show, and you're severing them completely separately into their own independent intersections. The problem then becomes, where the heck are you putting each of the intersections? Because let's start with the easiest one, ironically, which is Olsen here. Olsen would lose this, you'd move Olsen, and it would be reoriented to where likelihood is you follow this curve, you have to destroy this entire neighborhood and these apartments and everything else that's here to put it at least 600 feet to the east in its interaction and intersection with Beaverton Hillsdale. In the United States, it's been studied, very, very heavily studied, and proven that the minimum distance between major intersections should be no more than 600 feet between each other because otherwise it's not only becomes extensively inefficient, it also becomes extensively dangerous for everybody involved. And that's just not something you want to deal with, either of those things. Because then you're only probably actually going to amplify your problems further, ironically. So where do you, that again, it doubles up the question. You have to ask yourself it twice in a row for two different bases and reasons. Where do you put Olsen as an intersection with Beaverton Hillsdale? If you officially tear this whole area and neighborhood up and compl to completely not just redevelop it, but again, to fix this intersection, which it takes, should always be taking that priority, no matter what it's inevitable. There is going to be hundreds, if not potentially one to like three, four 5,000 people that will be un yeah, unhoused and displaced by by mandatory reality they have to lose their homes they have to lose their jobs they can't they do not have a fucking choice you'll even have to lose a school as you can see here like you're gonna have to remove so much business and commerce industry light industry which is a lot of this is actually more light industry in the commercial and of course tons of housing tons of residential you have to completely tear out upwards of potentially and displace potentially thousands of people in this one area alone just to completely re to fix this one problem so that you can then reasonably officially redevelop it with higher density in mind which again is technically a necessary need to get as high density as you can but the only way it's going to work is if you reconfigure this whole thing and fix it now you're back to where we just left off where do you put the intersection with Olsen if you sever and fix that connection? And is it now too close to this? Probably not, but you never know. Then you have the Shoals Ferry problem. This is why I selected Olsen first, is you might think Shoals Ferry is the easier one, but it isn't. Because again, look at the angle of both Beaverton Hillsdale as it, as it curves northward here, and look at the angle of Shoals Ferry's line of attack. Because you can even tell it in Google Earth, but basically it might as well be directly parallel to Beaverton Hillsdale, but it isn't. It's a north-south route and Beaverton Hillsdale is east-west. But you wouldn't know it by looking at this intersection. You'd think, okay, they're technically parallel roads. They are not. This is a genuine intersection of a north-south road almost going more east-west to cross an east-west highway. This hill is steeper than it looks in Google Earth on the northwest corner. In fact, just the north side in general. So now you not just only have to dishouse everybody who's in here and remove them, but you also have to do it so that you can completely redo the topography and terrain of this north side of Beaverton Hillsdale, even more specifically, again, this northwest corner, because it is way too steep and there's way too much topography to have to navigate and figure out how to deal with in order to make uh, Shoals Ferry intersection work, where it then intersects with Beaverton Hillsdale. 
the theory is, again, you'd still keep the intersection, its interaction with each other, somewhere right where it is currently, and or where Olsen currently intersects, could potentially be a better option as well. But either way, you have to do that. And then you also have to remove this side street, this little residential street on both ends. It's the south and north side, which is technically the same road, apparently. These, both these streets can't have an intersection at all with any of these roads. It just won't make any sense. So you have to dead end them. They can't interact. Either that, or again, if you can somehow manage to fix and reorient Searles Ferry and its intersection, intersection interaction with Beaverton Hillsdale, you could, in theory, either make it do an overpass or an underpass underneath that intersection, where they do not have ability to interact with that intersection or those two roads ways at all. They just cannot use dogwood to go to either roadway. The only way they could do it is if they go way up and start navigating through these side neighborhoods to then try to get to it and access it, say, by going and weaving through like this, say to the north, back to Shills Ferry, or again to the south, where they literally would just be forced to do it anyway in order to access that portion of the neighborhood. They just go down along the road and boom, they're back at, uh, uh, at uh, actually, I'm not sure if this is Shills Ferry. I'm not sure what road that is. I guess it isn't uh, Shills Ferry, but it's going to direct directly dump you out into this road that will lead you to directly to Shoals Ferry. <sighs> and then of course this is that still that same road over here. So you could they could also go just west um as well through the neighborhood weave through and then enter onto this road as well. And that would potentially alleviate that issue and then it would allow them to access once again both Beaverton Hillsdale as well as Shoals Ferry. But again the point is they have to go around Charlie's barn, which isn't the end of the world. It would still be fine. It would be inconvenient to them and i'm sure that especially those that live on the north side would especially lose their fucking minds because the richest you know the much richer people live obviously on the north side of Everton hillsdale because it's in the hills so it's always been where people have more money so naturally they're going to bitch way more and and complain about it way more but they you pretty much have to tell them to stuff it like it doesn't matter what you don't, what you don't want you don't get a vote and you don't get a say in this it has to be done it should have been done back at the latest in the 1970s so we could avoid this entire situation in the first place that we literally have brought upon ourselves because we keep putting it off and refusing to deal with it. So that's why I would actually argue in order to have this done, it's clear they have to make sure that nobody in the state of Oregon can vote on this. You cannot vote. Nobody gets any say. Nobody who lives here has a has, has a chance of the right, the legal right and obligation or ability to have any effect or impact on them to say, nope, the state just has to say, nope, fuck you. We're going to rip this bandaid off as it stands right now. We're going to make sure we cause the bleeding that we have to right now to fix this and piss off thousands of people. That's fine. We have to do it because otherwise we may never be able to do it. This may be our last chance that has to be done because you know, the voters are going to reject it and say no, because they don't want to be inconvenienced. They don't want to lose their homes. They don't want to lose their jobs and it's understandable, but it has to be fucking done. Because they, it can't just be constantly put off or say, no, it's fine. We'll just deal with it because it's just going to get worse and worse and worse, especially as they increase density all surrounding directly on this intersection. If they leave it as is, let alone the, the property that is Alvin Rose right here and the rest of the vicinity. And you'd swear the engineers would have had to been wicked high on like a cocktail, and a cacophony of drugs, hard street drugs, uppers. To think, this is fine. This is okay. We don't have to change this at all. No problem. Just leave it. it it'll be all right. And just keep expanding the roadways and paving over and adding to and developing along what this mess really stemmed from, which is the number one biggest, most important trails of the Native Americans and then later the wagon trails of the pioneers. Literally, that's how you get messes like this. It's literally exactly as it looked like back in the day, just it would have been way more compact, obviously. Um, so this could have been fixed and avoided at least at latest by the 70s without much upheaval, displacement or issues. But instead, they maintained it. So it has to be done. So here is the basic overview of what I feel would be the correct and best, most simplified realignment of 
this mess of a set of intersections. As you can see, this is Olsen's realignment. Obviously, all the red X's are pieces of roadway that would be completely removed and destroyed so that they no longer be, be present. This is an option technically because, at least for Olsen, I do have a couple of concepts I'm going to show you here pretty quick. But this is the curve I opted for, which is the first curve rather than the second one, and to get a straighter alignment with the new Beaverton Hillsdale alignment, because as you can see, I did in fact do as I said and suggested in the video, which is to straighten it out and put it to the east so that it avoids the northern curve that is completely unnecessary in the first place and it stays straight. The Shoals Ferry alignment and curvature has been fixed as well. It still curves, of course, but it's a corrective curve now instead to allow it to make a direct connection with itself and have an intersection a little ways further to the west of where it currently is with Beaverton Hillsdale. So that is your simplified look at the intersection concept to fix it. So the new one, of course, is the white highlights that goes from that second or the, excuse me, that first curve in the south and curves just a little ways east to meet up right about where the school is with the new alignment of Beaverton Hillsdale. And then, of course, we have the blankness that is the current alignment of Olsen. The possibility and potentiality of what you could do with the old Olsen at that point is something like this. So, of course, as you can see in the bottom right hand, you have the Alpenrose headquarter property that is to be developed. You obviously have the white that is the realignment of Beardon Hillsdale and Olsen and a little bit of Shoals Ferry. And then we have the multi-use path concept, which is basically that you would turn the old alignment of Olsen that would no longer be used. It would be removed or destroyed, well, instead you could technically reconfigure it to become a multi-use path. Meaning, of course, that it's not just for pedestrians, it's also going to be for bicyclists. You could even, if it stays as wide as the road is now, actually have festival space or have certain things like block parties, or you could even have community events, kiosks, because of things like small business, uh, events that you could have placed there. You could have a farmer's market. You could have a Saturday market. You could have a lot of different things you could do along the path, which I think is a very intelligent and great idea. In fact, the red electric, which is a rails to trails project, uh, red, the red electric path is just a little ways to the east. And it would actually be able to connect you potentially to the Red Electric from here as well, which I think is really cool, along with the Fano Creek Greenway and even the West Side Trail, if you were able to work with Washington County and the city of Beaverton to be able to actually go through and follow the creek along to officially reach those two trails. Of course, as you can see here, we also have the southern portion of Dogwood. So the idea I had is that the road or the car centric portion of Dogwood would end right here at the last residential spots, or potentially you could end it just a little further north to the southernmost parking lots and everything of these businesses if they stayed, or even if they got redeveloped into something higher density, which would be great and thus mixed use. It still would have some parking lot access in the back end and then you get access it from in here too not just from shoals ferry or from the multi-use path and then the rest of dogwood instead would of course become a pedestrian or bicycle i bet pedestrian slash bicycle bicycle path so that only of course peds and bicyclists could utilize it i also want to mention i did have two more reconfigurations of intersections slash messy road networks within the region here of Waitsville or Six Corners, whichever you want to call it here in Raleigh Hills. Uh, I actually have Hillsdale and that whole mess. I have that reconfigured so that it makes more sense as well as Multnomah Village. All of that has been reconfigured by me. Those concepts will be in a separate or different video. Anyway, that is my proposal and my concept for how to fix this intersection. It may not be as simple as that. I hope it can be. And I don't see why you couldn't make that work. I think it would make perfect sense. Let me know what you think 
in the comments below.